Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Jorgelina. I'm a vocal coach and I teach people how to sing from a holistic, integral and functional perspective. Now singing is not just about training your voice, so today I'm going to tell you the five things that every singer must do if they want to take singing to the next level. And before I do, I invite you to go to my description because I have a free resource there for you. So if you go to the description now, you're going to find my three singing secrets to improve your voice range in no time. Also during September, my new membership is offered as a super special Price. If you become a member during September, you're going to keep the discount during all the time that you decide to be a member. In the membership, you're going to find a lot of holistic singing classes, voice and movement, vocal technique, repertoire, and musicality. Now, coming back to today's topic, it's super important when you are a singer to understand that singing is holistic whether you want it or not. And what I mean by that is that you don't only sing with what it is here. I mean, of course, it's very important, but what it is here, all the singing system or the vocal system, System, it's influenced by everything else. And so if you don't take care of the whole thing in a way that is functional for singing, then you're never going to make the most out of your instrument. It's kind of like if you had a guitar and you had very old strings and you never changed them and it is not set up properly, the bridge is damaged, it is going to really affect the sound of your voice and even your technique. So with singing is the same, but even more so because of course we are 11 instruments. We have a super special instrument singers. Not only we get to say words, but also it is an alive instrument. It changes all the time, every single moment. So let's go for it. The first one is sleep. I know everybody talks about how good it is, but a lot of people don't get Get enough out of it and it is super important because when you are singing you need to be in a state in which you feel safe and when you don't have enough sleep you are more in an alert mode and it's not good for your singing technique your throat is gonna tend to close and we don't want that of course easier said than done if you have problems sleeping but there are a lot of things you can do about it i'm not a sleep doctor so i'm not gonna talk about that now but just make sure you get your sleep every night. Second point is to make sure that you have your stress levels under control. For singing, it is crucial, as I said before, that you're able to come to your parasympathetic mode in which you are not so alert, you are relaxed, then your vocal cords can function correctly. Otherwise, they can't really function in singing mode. They can function in other modes, just not in singing mode. And to sing from a differentiated and healthy and natural system, we need to bring the system to singing mode. And if you want to learn how to do it, join my membership because it's all about that functional singing. There are lots of things you can do to have your stress levels under control. For me, it has a lot to do with making sure that I'm surrounded by a positive environment and I have calm music around me. I have enough silence through the day. I have enough exercise, trying to take care of the foods that I'm taking, having enough sleep, of course, taking magnesium supplements, etc. So a lot of things you can do nowadays, but you do have to take care of it because otherwise you can sing as many hours as you can. You're not going to really make the most out of it. Third point is the tolerance to CO2. This one is not so obvious, but it's super, super important for singing. Increasing the tolerance to CO2, it's very important to make you have a resilient voice, which you can use when you are in situations of um, stress, for example, when you have to perform in public. It makes your voice more resilient and it does give you a sensation of an open trough. Increasing your tolerance to CO2 allows you to have a better exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide, and that allows you to actually have your body oxygenated. Otherwise the oxygen can really get into different parts of your body. So very important. Point number four, muscle balance. As I said before, singing is holistic, whether you want it or not. And that means that you can see what is happening in the voice reflected in the whole body. One example of this is the uh, balancing between the anterior muscles of the body and the back muscles of the body or the flexors and extensors. We tend to adopt a bad posture because they are out of balance. So one of those groups are overworking and then that gives you poor posture, a breathing that is not ideal and voice muscles that cannot really work in well coordination, which means forced voice and limited range, that kind of things. So having enough muscle balance, it's really good for your voice and crucial. And that also includes having a good body tonus. When I talk about tonus, I mean the state of your muscles. So this is high body tonus and this is low body tonus. So for singing, we want somewhere in the middle. We want to have balancing between the tonus of all the muscles in a functional manner, of course. That thing about you have to be super, super relaxed for singing, not so much. You have to have enough activations in the right muscles for singing. And finally, the fifth point is vocal health. 
This one is what we contemporary singers struggle with a lot of times. I have sometimes students that come to me and tell me they are singing in a band or something like that and they are desperate because they can't sing more than one or two songs without getting tired and they feel their voice is forced and then they can't speak. And then I will ask them the dangerous questions, do you smoke? And the answer is yes. Then I will proceed. Maybe you can try not smoking before you perform. And they say, no, that's impossible. I need to do that. I mean, the smoking is super obvious. It directly burns the membranes of your vocal cords and they can't fully come together. You are going to have to force your voice. If you can train as many hours as you want, as I said before, but if you don't take care of that basic things, then you're not going to have results and you're going to harm your voice. In fact, practicing it might be detrimental if you are damaging your voice and you're kind of forcing it more and more because you're going to be working with a voice that is not healthy. And if the voice is not healthy, the technique is not functional. You cannot be in singing mode if your voice is suffering because your body is in alert, your whole body is in alert. I'm not saying don't smoke, but I'm going to say if you have to sing, you have to give enough time, at least some hours before you sing, Try not smoking and make sure you keep yourself hydrated because the voice has to recover. But best is not to smoke for singing. I know it's an unpopular opinion. It does make a huge difference. Alcohol is not that bad, but it does dehydrate you. So if you drink alcohol, you have to drink much, much more water. And same with caffeine, it also dehydrates you. You have to take more water to make up for it. But best is not to take those at least the days you are singing or, or at least not for some hours before. Keeping your voice hydrated is crucial. If you don't have enough time to keep yourself very well hydrated through water, you can always use a nebulizer with a saline solution that tends to have much quicker effect in the hydration of the voice system. There are of course many other things that you can do to keep a good voice health. Those are the obvious ones and the most urgent ones. There is one more that is super, super important and it is to prevent acidic reflux. So if you suffer from acidic reflux, that can be, for example, because you maybe you eat to close before bedtime or you take a lot of super spicy foods before singing. Singers, we are more likely to get that because we have a little bit more air pressure, obviously, because we sing and because we use the voice a lot. Preventing acidic reflux or having it under control, it's really, really good for your voice. If you take care of your voice and you have a healthy voice, that is a good foundation to start your vocal training. So those are my five tips. If you like content like this, don't forget to subscribe and like this video to keep yourself informed of my future videos. I'll see you next time.